So in this part, we're going to look at uh, different ways of uh, searching, sorting, and locating unique values and counting values in our data. So when you actually have to have particular uh, data sets, you'll often uh, want to go and find particular values, find where certain values happened. You might want to find all the possible unique values you got in it. Um, you may need to go and sort your data. Um, and so you need to go and count how many times things might happen. So, and then there are some special values like uh, not a number um, and also plus or minus infinity that might crop up in your data and you probably want to know where they are. Okay, so um, the easiest way to count all the occurrences um, of a particular value is to do some kind of logical test, um, such as testing for equality. So we're gonna take our, um, our uh, numpy dices that we created in the, in the previous part. So this is an array of um, 50, no, 100 values of uh, random numbers between one and sixes. And I want to know where are they equal to six. So I can simply do the array np dice equals equals six, and that returns um, an array of 100 items of false or true, depending whether that particular element was or wasn't equal to six. And that's what you see here. So to get the corresponding indices, you can do um, something like this. So I could create a, um, uh, a array, uh, uh, an array which counts up with the correct indices, so zero to um, 100, zero to 99 in this case. Um, and so I'm using the A range there. I'm just saying create me a, a range, an, an array with numbers up to the size of the um, the NP dice array I was working with, make sure they're integers. And then I'm going to take that array, and I'm going to index it with the condition I got from testing whether the numpy dice was equal to six. So if you remember back to the first um, unit of this series, part three, when we were doing indexing of arrays, I said that you could index a numpy array with another array of true and falses that was the same size, and it would return just the elements that are true. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the condition I just created where the dice value was equal to six. And I'm using that to index a thing which is in fact giving me the, the, in, the numbers zero to 99, which are the indexes where I'm, I'm interested in. And so this has dug out the, all the positions where my um, uh, dice score was equal to six. Um, okay, so um, if you want to return um, something where, uh, if you want to return, say, like one value where something is true, another value where something is it uh, is false, then kind of the naive way of doing this would be to write a loop. So you do something like sort of for element in uh, list, if element is, um, if some condition involving the element is true, um, uh, give back yes, else give back no. Um, and so you'd, you'd tend to write a for loop with an if statement to go and do that. Um, what is much more efficient when you've got a numpy array is to use the np.where function. So uh, this is, if you like, rolling that for loop and if statement all up together. So you're doing simply np.where, you give it a um, something which is going to be uh, an array, give you an array of trues and falses. And then you give it the value to return if it's true and the value to return if it's false. Um, and so um, if I feed that over my dice array, then um, it will go and calculate a two dimensional array of is a six or is not a six. Um, that's a bit big to print out. So I just print the last um, uh, uh, set of values there, the last 10, 10 elements. Then you can see um, that it's coming back with is not a six, is a six. And indeed, if we just looked at the previous um, table um, and looked where the trues and forces are, we'd see that it was coming back with the same pattern for those last 10 elements. So nb.where is a good way of demonstrating um, that you're, you're testing where um, a value is. Um, you're saying one answer if the value is true, another answer if the value is false. Um, if we then want to go and count those matching values, um, then 
um, there's a couple of ways of doing it. So we can use um, uh, one thing, which is just count um, uh, no zero. So that will um, simply return a count of one for everything you get, which isn't a zero and um, nothing for a zero. Um, that works because a uh, false value is equivalent to zero and a true value is equivalent to one. Um, you can actually also just do np.sum um, and rely on the fact that that's going to count all the trues as one and all the falses count as zero. So the sum is just the number of trues you've got there. Uh, so in this case here, we're just going to go and um, count the number of sixes we rolled in our in our hundred throws of our numpy dice. Um, so I ask it just to do uh, np count no zeros for that condition again, and tells us we had a total of 16 sixes out of 100 throws, which I think is about right if you work out. Yes, it should be uh, on average 18 and two thirds for 100 throws of the dice. So 16 is within um, random chance of that. So I said there was a problem with comparing floating point numbers. Um, and as an example of this, um, let's go and see what happens if we try comparing the cosine of pi by two uh, to zero. So obviously you should know that the cosine of pi by two actually mathematically is zero, um, but what happens when we actually try doing the sum? And it comes back and it tells us that no, in fact, um, the cosine of pi by two is not zero. Now, if you actually ask it what the cosine of um, pi by two is, it'll tell you it's something like one times 10 to the minus 16. Um, and that's coming about because it's doing this um, set of, it's got a set of rounding errors as it's doing the calculation. Um, so to avoid that problem um, of trying to compare two floating point numbers, which is not very safe, NumPy provides the is close function. Um, so if I then come back and say, is um, the cosine of pi by two close to zero, to say better than one part in 10 to the minus 10, it says, yes, that is actually the case. So again, if you're trying to compare floating point numbers, you need to be careful um, because it's very easy to go and have things come as not being equal when they are equal. Um, so the third parameter there we're saying is the tolerance. And so you can choose how close do you think close should be uh, for it to count as being the same number. And the other thing you might find that you get in there, sometimes you get certain special values. So the, um, the standard for representing floating point numbers that NumPy adheres to, it's a, an IEEE standard um, that's used by a number of different programming languages, defines a few special values. It defines a special value, not a number, and it also defines plus or minus infinity. Um, and sometimes you can get not a numbers cropping up in your data. So sometimes this comes about when you say loading data in. So if you've looked at the Working with Files video three, I think, where we talk about using NumPy gen from TXT, um, if NumPy gen from TXT can't convert a, can't work out what it's reading, can't convert it to number, it'll return that value as not a number. Um, and equally, you can sometimes get mathematical functions which will return not a number because the answer is not defined. Um, and then this value, um, counts as a floating point number for the purposes of being able to store it in the array, um, uh, but obviously it's not a number you can actually do anything with. So you probably want to go and check whether you've got not a numbers in your data. Uh, so there's a handy numpy function, is the NAN or is not a number. Uh, and so in this case, if I ask it to calculate the logarithm of minus one, which obviously is undefined, so that returns not a number and I say is the logarithm of minus one, not a number. It says, yes, it is. Um, you'll also see that, um, uh, uh, that it's actually stuck out a little warning as I did the calculation because the log function that says mm, you shouldn't be able to do log with negative numbers. So um, it's uh, given me a warning that something is wrong. Although it's also gone and done the sum merrily anyway, um, which I guess is probably a lesson. If you start encountering warnings in your code that you weren't expecting, then it's worth working out why. Um, there is a slight danger, however. Um, so not a number is a very interesting number in the sense that if you try doing any operation at all with it, the answer is not a number, including testing for equality. So you'd expect me able to go and do um, np log minus one 
equals equals NP NAN and have the answer to be true, i.e. I'm testing to see is log of minus one equal to not a number. And I just said it's, we just said it's not a number. So why is this coming up with false? And this is coming up because if anything, if NP NAN appears on any part of your sum, it's going to return not a number uh, overall. Um, uh, and the logical value for not a number is false. So in fact, what's going on here is we're doing the comparison. It's saying, oh, no, don't like this. Um, return not a number. OK, let's make not a number into a true or false value. Well, it's false. Um, so that can get a bit sticky if you start trying to, if you're not aware of this and you start trying to, to test for NAN in a, in a silly way. Uh, there's then also the special values for infinity. So we can trip over those by simply, again, um, using our log function and this time asking it for the log of zero, which again, you should know is um, uh, on the bit where the logarithm is, is ceases to be defined. So in fact, it's um, minus infinity. So um, NumPy provides a handy is finite function, um, which will return true if the number you give it or the, the array of numbers you give it uh, are finite numbers. And obviously this isn't, so it returns false. And again, we're getting it, it gives us a warning as we're doing the log function that it's producing a, an ill-divined number because effectively we're doing the divide by zero. Um, and in fact, you can trigger this equally easily just simply by doing one, one divided by zero. Um, we'll give you a similar problem. Unlike not a number, um, infinity is a value that you can actually go and compare to other values. So you can say, is the log of zero equal to minus NP infinity inf? And it, it says, yes, it is. So it's only NP NAN that has this slightly annoying behavior that it, it makes everything not a number, um, no matter what kind of sums you do with it. Um, whereas infinity, at least you can check for equality to it. Um, Obviously, if you try checking whether anything is bigger um, than plus infinity or smaller than minus infinity, it's going to return false. OK, um, so then um, you also might want to go and check whether a particular value is in an array. So you want to be able to go and search whether something is there. So there are a couple of ways you can do it. Um, you can use the uh, NP uh, any function function to say, are any of these uh, Boolean values, I'm going to feed it uh, true. And the Boolean values I feed it again are that equality test. So I'm using that same test is something equal to sex, equals equals to sex to say, are any of those values true? And yeah, there is at least one dice throw that was six. So you can say it's true. Um, but actually also the standard in operator that you might use the list also works. So possibly slightly more readably, you can just say six in NP dice or if six in NP dice, and it will return true. Um, and so to my mind, that's easier to understand than using the any function. Um, there are good points at which you want to use the any function, but um, in this particular case, the in operator is, is as good. Um, we also check um, whether all the dice throw rolls were six. And in that case, we would use the np.all function. Um, and unsurprisingly, not all the dice uh, throws we did were six, and so it tells us no, that's false. Sorting um, again, sometimes you want to go about sort your data, um, so that's done with the np sort function. Um, and so we can simply take our random data um, and we can sort it. So the sort function takes an axis parameter. So that lets you sort um, along rows or along columns, um, much like the other NumPy functions did. Um, if you specify axis equals none, then it will go and sort um, uh, just all the elements together. Um, so again, it very much depends on um, what your data wants to go and do, what, how, how you want to handle um, your multidimensional data. Uh, and then you might also want to know how many unique values you have within a data set. Um, so this is basically just make sure you get just the, uh, a list of all possible elements you've got, but only have each one only once. Um, and so that's the unique function. And again, you can stick it in. If we give it our dice data, then you see that it did in fact have 
all the numbers from one to six as potential throws of our dice, which I guess is what you'd expect. Um, so we threw every number came up at least once, of which include that well, dice might have been loaded, but it was not completely horribly broken. <laughs> 